I'm just not sure if um, in atheism there is there is a, a tendency to to uh, delimit these these ethical questions into uh, these either or uh, responses. And I, I'm not sure if it's hurting because ethics and morality is so much bigger, and religion addresses it better for the average person. And I think that's why ethics have a large problem with uh, their approach to morality. Um, it's just uh, some random thoughts that uh, came to mind while I was hearing that as part of the presentation. Yeah, those are all valid comments. I mean, evolutionary psychology and those you know, those ideas of these moral and intuitive grammars are in their infancy. They're like two years old. <laughs> this book was published two or three years ago. So I wouldn't say that we can build up a naturalistic framework for ethics. I'm not an expert in the area by any means. Um, these examples are just, just what they are interesting examples. Isn't it interesting that regardless of what we believe, there are certain ethical decisions that we'll make that we have in common with, with others. And I wouldn't say that it necessarily means that, you know, we've decided that, yes, we can now build a complete moral system based on this. No. I mean, there's a golden rule, there's all sorts of other things that you have to bring into play. What I would disagree with is the idea that religion necessarily offers a ready-made ethical system. I mean, religion is completely inconsistent. Every religion disagrees on the ready-made package that you're going to adopt. And nobody, you know, nobody buys most of what the Bible says about ethics. Read the, the Ten Commandments, the first five are all about belief in monotheism. I guess I'm breaking five of the Ten Commandments just by giving this talk. So most people are, are and of course the, the, um, the crimes for that, you know, they're, they're, they range from stoning to other forms of assassination. Nobody's throwing stones at me right now. So mo many people are violating their Ten Commandments right here. So I wouldn't necessarily say that religion offers anything superior. I don't think that, uh, so I don't think that science or, or evolutionary psychology or, or secular ethics are perfect. Um, Certainly, as I said, in their infancy, but no, that's where my that's where my money is going to be placed. Hi, how are you? Good. Um, just in reference to your uh, comment on religious centers at uh, at this university, you you mentioned that um, I think something along along the lines that. They actually get special space, whereas most of us, I mean, other, you know, people who aren't religious don't really. And I mean, you, you didn't really uh, expand on that kind of advice, and I'm sort of interested to know your thoughts on, on why and, you know, how, uh, how that's fair that uh, religious clubs get special space and prayer space that costs our university money, which is ultimately deducted, I mean, well, charged to our tuition, and I mean, that's not really fair to students who, yeah. no. Um, one of the very first things that I did as an activist when I founded the U of T Secular Alliance two and a half years ago was submitted a memo to the governing council there condemning the idea of building a faith center at U of T. It was a 10 year project and I submitted that memo about a week before the end of the 10 years. So, you know, they didn't advertise it at all. Only to the religious groups that they, they figured would be interested in the project. They didn't do a general survey to see what students' attitudes were. They don't typically do that as governing council after all. And uh, we submitted the memo, and we said all sorts of things, like what you're saying. Um, it was a, it's a $4 million project. All student groups should be competing for money equally. You shouldn't be saying 25% of student groups get a free space that no other group can compete for when it comes to booking room or you know, other resources. Like it, Basically, they have an employee that all they do is, is devote time to promoting faith through the faith center. That's all, that's all that employee does. I think that resources should be competed for by all student groups, atheists and uh, secular atheists and religious groups alike. And that's one, and that's the argument that you made, and you know, I, would, I would agree with that. The other, I mean, there are a number of arguments. Um, you know, th there's this entitlement complex that we have in Canada that says that um, any minority group is, gets privileged just because they're a minority group. You know, I don't buy that. I mean, there are certain rights, like your right to practice and have your religion, certainly. But you're not entitled to have special treatment, like having a $4 million building built for you in a secular institute. As I said, if religious groups thought it was actually an important thing, this, you know, this multiculturalism, they could get together and build their own multi-faith center. They don't need to have students or, or governing council spending you know, secular taxpaying dollars on it. Effectively, it comes from the government. Um, there's other options out there. 
and you know religious groups get charity status. Right. This would be a good thing to use it for. So I mean, uh, but I mean, the question remains: the Scott Religious Center continues to be funded by York University, yeah. and I mean that I won't stand for that. I mean, in, in, the, in the case that it's being deducted, I, I don't, I, I have no use for that center. I mean, like, it's, it's. What, what sort of advice do you have to offer us? On, oh, on, I see. On because I, I also said play I the mean, game and get yeah, involved in the infrastructure that exists. They need to go build their own their own um, center elsewhere that's not on on my secular campus. This is the problem we face because uh, the the nomenclature is defined against us and the infrastructure is set against us. We would also like to have humanist officiants, humanist chaplains, given the same rights as religious chaplains. But here's the problem: to do that, you have to work through the Ontario Multi Faith Council. We're not really a faith. So what do we do? Do we say grumblingly, "Okay, we'll pretend to be a faith," and then, of course, that's perfect, perfect, you know, counter arguments get just handed over to our cultural competitors? Or do we say we're going to spend years and decades building our own version of the Ontario Multi Faith Council, getting it acknowledged by the government? That could take decades to do. You know, in the interest of expediency, there's a compromise that needs to be made. So we're, you know, we're, that's, a, that's a controversial issue. CFI is not a, char a religious charity. Um, some humanist groups have finally got the government to give them a religious charity designation. Why is that important? Well, because if you're an educational charity, a center for inquiry is, you have to do educational things. If you're a charity that gets its status based on doing works for the poor, you have to do works for the poor. If you're a religious charity, all you have to do is promote belief in your religion. That's it. Okay, that's incredibly vague and just idiotic, to be honest with you. And so this, you know, this is great. I mean, if you want to have a charity that you can basically do anything you want with, you get the government to recognize you as a religion. Unfortunately, the website says clearly, ethics not based on belief in God does not qualify as religious charity. The humanists had to take this before the Supreme Court, well, or threatened to at least, and they finally got an exception made. I notice the website hasn't changed, even though this precedent's been set, which is curious. In any case, CFI, for strategic and just kind of reasons of principle, has decided not to go this direction. We're applying as an educational charity, waiting to get our status probably this week and ne next week. Um, in any case, uh, so it, yeah, it's, it's strategy and it's compromise, and it's, this is the debate we have to have. I don't have any quick answers for you except to tell you that uh, you know we've tried to do the, the most principled thing. We stood up for why the multi-faith center should not be built with secular money, and it was built anyway. Um, and it was going to be, you know, this was just us, our way of getting on the front page of a bunch of papers, and that worked well. Basically, we recruited our whole group based on that. Yeah. It was good for recruiting. Well, don't, don't think you have to do things to win a fight. Recruiting yeah. is important too. Uh, but at the end of the day, we decided it was too important, as I said, to be involved, especially when, partly because of, you know, all of our lobbying efforts, they actually included, as far as I know, for the first time, a statement that the mission of the center, of the multi case center, wouldn't just be about giving prayer space, it would be about the discussion of faith on campus, about the limits of faith. They actually put that kind of language in there, which we saw as a step in the right direction. And so we have representation making sure that they actually do have those discussions of religion in secular society. It's a compromise, yes, but strategically we decided that that was, that was the right way to go. And other, you may disagree, um, and I would entirely respect that. Actually, I wouldn't. In fact, I think that would be a good next step. Thank you very much. Yeah, all means. If you aren't already, join the, join the group here. He's the president. Oh, you're the president. Okay, good to meet you. <laughs> Evan, is it? Yeah. Sorry. It's embarrassing. All right. <laughs> okay, Albert Einstein said that God did not play that. This is referring to the argument of design. So when you said in your lecture that you said the best argument refuting the argument of design, um, <coughs> was the god of the gaps. So was that to say that that gap has not yet been filled? Well, those are two different arguments put forward often by you know, creationists. The god of the gaps and the argument from design. Those are, those are arguments for God, not or to, burn, to attempt to bring down the edifice of science. No, no, like what I'm trying to say is, for example, like you talked about the god of Thor and the god of Saturn, all these used to be gaps that were later filled on 